Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Paige here once again with another video today. This is actually my second video today, which is pretty insane. I wasn't expecting to do two videos today, but sometimes things just happen, don't they? So, wow, we got some amazing stuff to talk about, and I'm not going to waste your guys' time. We're going to jump straight into the, the, the main meat and potatoes of what we want to talk about, or I guess the meat of the meat and potatoes, and that is that we actually got our first look at the new Flash suit. Um, they also released uh, some new information as well in regards to... We're going to go over Flash, Arrow, and Supergirl in this video, but we're going to go over Flash, then Arrow, then Supergirl. But they released some information along with some new you know, new photos and new looks of this season. So let's just jump into the Flash one first. But of course, leave your thoughts on the new Flash suit in the comments section down below. Do you like it? Do you love it? What do you... Actually, most importantly, what do you rate it out of 10? That's usually what I ask you when something new comes out. So what do you rate it out of 10? And um, yeah, also if you just enjoy the video and stuff and you want to show your support and hype, drop a like on the video to show your support. So let's just look at the new Flash suit. So here it is. Um, we can see we have Cisco, uh, Iris, and Cecile in the background as well. I don't know, they're in, I'm guessing they're versing the the villain of episode one, I guess, that's probably what it is, or it could be episode two, because I'm pretty sure we heard that this new suit actually comes to Barry at the end of episode one, I think he gets to the end of episode one, so um, I'll have to wait and see when he gets it specifically, I guess, what photo, uh, what episode specifically this photo is from, but looking at it, you know, if we just look at the lower half, so I know that the top half is hard to keep your eyes away from, but the bottom half is basically the same as last season, um, with some like detailing changes. That's pretty much it. Like we are, they basically already said that, that the bottom half is the same as last season. Just with some of the, like, some of the little changes where basically they put the gold lining where there was that random, just like dark red lining. Like we thought that that's where gold lining should have been just to give the suit a bit more of a pop, I guess you could say. And that's what they've done. But now let's just move on to the head. Um, the, the earpieces I think are very cool. That That is legitimately just flash from the comics. Like when that was the first thing I saw when I saw the suit was the, I wasn't looking at the chin strap. But I saw those ear things. That's amazing. That is actually, I love that. That's, I think that's my favorite part of the suit is the little, like the really comic accurate, uh, ear pieces and stuff like that. But if we move on to the rest of it, you can tell it's like a hard, um, like, it's, a, it's like a hard dome thing on his head. Like it is pretty much what they were going for last season, but they have, you know, put in the chin strap. Now I'm interested to see like how it works um, because what it, like the, the reason that they changed it last season to the way it looked was for ease of access. So Grant could put it on easier, but you can tell it's like, it's like one piece now. So I wouldn't mind seeing like how he puts it on. Now that it's revealed, we might actually get like a, sort of like a behind the scenes sort of thing maybe on how he puts it on, but it does look much better. It does, it does look, I know that like, I, I, don't get me wrong. I really like it, but it looks fake. I, I know that sounds weird, but I, hopefully you guys know what I mean. Like it has like a weird fake look to it. It almost looks like it's cosplay at the top. Like it's made from like something cheap. But once again, that could be this photo. The photo might not be doing it justice and the rest of the suit looks fine as well. So I'm going to give it, I'd like, I prefer to wait and see until they're in motion. And don't get me wrong. As I said, I do like the suit. It just has like that weird gloss on the top, which looks a bit weird, but maybe that's just the way that the photo was taken or just because a photo was taken. Cause we won't see it like this all the time. We're going to see it actually you know, in motion on the show. So yeah, we'll wait and see um, how it looks then. But first impressions, I think it's really good. And it's uh, definitely the most comic accurate suit that we've had, which is um, obviously amazing. But they did give us a little bit of a, uh, like a, a teaser for what's coming this season. Uh, TV Line did their full preview. So let's just read that out now. Picking up moments after Nora was erased from the timeline, Barry, Nora, and the others will come to realize, uh, Barry, Iris, and the others, sorry, will come to realize the infamous crisis is arriving five years sooner than expected. And it's like stepping on a landmine, says showrunner Eric Wallace. All of a sudden, the future is today, and that turns everything upside down. You'll see each member of Team Flash react in their own unique and sometimes tragic way. As if that were not enough, the pre-crossover run of episodes, dubbed Graphic Novel No. 1, will burn fast and hot with the introduction of Dr. Ramsey Rosso, played by heroes Sentil Ramamurthy, a renowned hematologist who shares a really great relationship with Caitlin, but is fated to become the villain known as Bloodwork. Related to the new threats, Iris, the journalist, will get pulled into a, a very deep mystery while also working uh, to make the citizen grow up real fast due to the accelerated uh, Flash Vanishes Dateline. 
Speaking of the crisis, and we shall be, Tom Cavanaugh's newest Wells is integral to not just the first half of the season, but his storyline leads directly into the crossover, says Wallace. And they gave us a bonus spoiler, a bonus spoiler sorry, they said, the first third of the season will make time for one or two additional nemesis is that even the word, um, including a guest cameo that will be fun for the fans. Um... Not 100% sure what they're talking about there because Flash has been pretty like under wraps, I guess you could say, in regards to, um, you know, how they've done things. I know that um, Tom Felton is currently in Vancouver filming a Netflix movie, so maybe they might have been able to organize like a couple of days during the break of that Netflix filming to maybe make a cameo on Flash, which could be um, maybe, uh, you know, int- you know that, that could be one of those cameos or something like that. We'll have to wait and see. But in regards to that, um, that new Wells character, obviously we know he's going to be playing Pariah, like Tom Cavanaugh is going to be playing Pariah. So it's going to be interesting to see if um, his character from this season is Pariah. Like they are both doctors and scientists. Oh, well, they're both scientists, uh, sorry. Um, Pariah was in the comics and Dr. Wells' new one is obviously as well. Um, so maybe that he becomes Pariah. Maybe he's integral to the crossover and stuff like that. So yeah. But yeah, I can't stop looking at that Flash suit, especially those goddamn ears. Damn it, like, I, I want to see more photos of it. It's it's insane. Um, but yeah, obviously we did talk about um, the Central City Citizen quickly in there. I did a video earlier on today going more in depth with that and some other stuff that wasn't talked about here. Um, so the link to that video will be in the description down below if you want to go check it out. But now let's move on to Arrow. So Arrow released a new picture here, which has um, Laurel in or Earth 2 Laurel in her new Black Canary suit. Uh, Diggle in his new suit, if you can't tell, it has like green in it. Uh, green in it sorry. Um, so that's Diggle's new suit. And then we have Oliver there in a... In his new suit, it looks, it basically looks like in the dark here, it basically looks like the season one, two, and three suit pretty much. And I guess even sort of like the season, what, season five and something suit anyway. But it's, that's the new suit there. You can tell by like the zip up collar thing um, down the middle of him. But yeah, I think, I can't, like, Laurel's suit is amazing. I wish we had that Black Canary suit for much longer. Like, the yellow detailing and stuff looks like the Young Justice Black Canary, which is really cool. But they actually um, released some other information about Arrow as well for their um, new or their final season, that being Season 8. And this is what they said. As suggested by the Season 7 finale, Oliver will be doing the Monitor's bidding until the Crisis crossover kicks off in December. And though Oliver assumed he'd fly solo on the, on this uh, task-based mission, a familiar encounter will lead him to realize he's not going to be allowed to do it alone, says series lead Stephen Amell. As David Ramsey told TV Line, Diggle has always been on Oliver's side, and it will be no different in season eight. We'll see them get even tighter in ways that they have uh, in ways they haven't that they haven't seen before. Sorry. Co-showrunner Mark Guggenheim acknowledging that Arrow is fundamentally a different show without Emily Bett Ricard, who played Felicity, says that the first seven episodes of the ten-episode farewell run off uh, farewell run offer an opportunity to really look back on the first seven seasons, which is very gratifying. And as it does so, watch for a return to stunts that we've never seen before, says Guggenheim, while Amel adds, we're going to try to develop a sense of humor for Oliver in the nick of time. So obviously, for those that know, like Green Arrow has always had like a bit of a charming humor, I guess you could say to him in the comics, which wasn't really displayed in Arrow for a lot. Like there were like glimpses of it, but it wasn't like prevalent. You know, it was like once every blue moon. So I guess in the nick of time that Oliver, you know, gets that humor. Uh, but they did have a bonus spoiler here. They went in the future storyline with Mia, Konica, and, uh, Konica, Connor, and the others. Uh, we get to do something with Team Arrow 2.0 that we didn't get a chance to do with 1.0, which is tell the story of their growing pain, says Guggenheim. That's a lot of fun. So I am interested to see how much of the story, uh, the future storyline is in this season. I'm going to assume it's going to be the same as it was last season. You know, how, many, how much per episode is the same amount of uh, time in, you know, this season's episodes. But we'll have to wait and see how they wrap all that up as well. I don't know if that'll be the spin. Off. I don't really want the future stuff to be the spin-off, but it could be, so I have to wait and see. And then finally, Supergirl. So they show this new, um, a new picture here, which is nothing too revealing because um, it's just a, a, like another promo images from the set the pro- of uh, Supergirl promo images they released last week in like a theater sort of thing. So nothing too amazing here, unfortunately. But in their full preview, they went on to say, We think of this as our ode to Black Mirror, showrunner Robert Rovna says of Supergirl's fifth season, which finds our heroes battling technology itself. The hope is that people would be more engaged with what's going on and wanting to make the world a better place, but they seem to be more engaged with technology. We explore how that affects our characters and how our villains try to explore that. On a more human level, the relationship between Kara and Lena is the most is the uh, the emotional center of the season, Jessica 
Jessica Queller avows. Uh, but uh, Kari's betrayal puts that uh, friendship front and center. Meanwhile, as Alex and Kelly are getting to know each other better, Nia and Brainy have a slightly more challenging romantic journey ahead of them. Brainy is a little different, the showrunners acknowledge. And forget everything you've heard about Julie Gonzalo's character, media maven Andrea Rojas, aka the superhero Akrata, we put our, we put our own Supergirl spin on Akrata, uh, Rovna says, one that is unique to our show, and on the big bad front, expect Leviathan's agenda for Earth to play out as a season-long arc. And the bonus spoiler they gave is, Quella promises a big twist for Eve in episode 2, and it's not what fans might be expecting. Um, so on Supergirl's front, I'm interested to see how they do this, if it is, like, not necessarily their take on a Black Mirror sort of episode, but their ode to it with, like, you know, technology coming into it, because it could be either really well done, or could be, like, I wouldn't say corny, but just a bit boring, if, if you know what I mean. I'm excited to see what they do, especially with, the, like, the Leviathan thing as well, um, because I wasn't too sure what they were necessarily setting up at the end of last season. Um, I'm just interested, interested to see, like, the the fallout from the end of last season as well, how that affects this season as well. Because Supergirl last season was probably the most consistent season. And I think towards the end, ended up having the best finale of all the shows. So let's see how they pick it up in our season five. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome if you could drop a like and it show your support. As I said, let me know all your various thoughts on the stuff we went over and specifically, I guess, the Flash suit. And um, yeah, leave all them in the comments section down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. And um, yeah, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.